Hello, welcome to the recorded version of the talk that I gave in Genoa on the last 21st of December on the occasion of the second Ithaca conference. My talk is about some statements that are independent of ZFC set theory. Um, they were originally model theoretical in nature, but were later on reformulated in the context of presentable categories. Um, and uh, what I did was trying to reformulate, it one, reformulate all of them once more in the context of presentable uh, infinity categories and see how the new statements relate to the, to the classical ones. So I'm just gonna skip any hardcore model theory and just jump straight to the, to the presentable category formulations. <clears throat> okay, so here are the classical statements. Let us consider the following three uh, three sentences. First one is there is no proper class of objects in a presentable category that only has identities as morphisms. This is known as VPR, which stands for the rigid formulation of Lopienka's principle. Second one is the so-called ordinal formulation of Lopienka's principle. It says that there is no full embedding of the cardinal of, of the of the category of ordinals into any presentable category. And the third one is known as weak Lopinka's principle for a reason that I'm gonna tell you in a second. It says that there is no full embedding of the opposite category of ordinals into any presentable category. <clears throat> now, this is how these three, these, these first three statements relate to each other. There is a theorem, classical theorem by Adamek and Rositsky, saying that the first two uh, of these three statements are actually equivalent. Uh, and generally simply known as Vopenka's principle, omitting the, the words rigid and ordinal respectively. And they both imply uh, weak Vopenka's principle, hence the, the adjective weak in front of its name. Now there is another, uh, another recent result uh, dating back to, uh, I think two years ago, it says that the implication from Lopinka's principle to weak Lopinka's principle is strict, which Wilson did very explicitly in particular, uh, exhibiting a model of ZFC's theory in which weak Lopinka's principle was uh, um, true, but Lopinka's principle is false. Um, plus there is another theorem, again by Adam Kerosiski, which gives the exact set theoretical collocation of the statement. In particular, if we assume that there is at least one huge cardinal, whatever the definition of huge cardinal is, then we this principle is consistent. And on the other hand, uh, assuming we put this principle implies the existence of a proper class of measurable cardinals. So this is the, I, I, I thought I'd just give a mention of this, but I'm not gonna linger on any, any more uh, <clears throat> real set theory from now on. So we would like now to reformulate uh, all three of these statements in terms of presentable uh, infinity categories as opposed to uh, one-dimensional one categories. Now observe that the first one of these statements can be re-expressed by saying that there are, there are only endomorphisms in this proper class of objects. And uh, all the hum sets of endomorphisms are uh, singletons. So as per usual, we, we just replace the word singleton by the word contractible uh, mapping space in infinity categories. And we immediately obtain a reformulation of, of um, an infinity categorical reformulation of the first one. So VPR infinity is going to be, there is no proper class of objects in a presentable infinity category that only has endomorphisms and the, the mapping spaces of endomorphisms are contractible. Uh, even simpler is a reformulation of the other two statements, which go as follows. First one is there is no full embedding of the nerve of the ordinal category into a presentable infinity category. And similarly, we take the nerve uh, in, the, in the other statement. So now, if we 
have a counterexample of either of, uh, of any one of the, of the one category statements, just by taking nerves, we immediately obtain counterexamples to the infinity category, to the corresponding infinity categorical statement. So we immediately <clears throat> uh, can expand the, the, the two propositions in the previous slide in the following diagram of implications. Um, because taking nerves preserves all the uh, all co limits, presentability, and uh, fully full faithfulness, and all the properties that, that we that <clears throat> uh, we need in order to contradict the infinity categorical statements. Now, our first question will be uh, will be trying to will be whether the vertical implications are invertible. So in particular, what happens if we're given a counterexample to one of the infinity categorical statements? <clears throat> so first we have a, a very powerful tool by Lori. It says that every presentable infinity category is equivalent to the coherent nerve of a combinatorial simplician model category. So in particular, we immediately, through this theorem, we immediately obtain uh, counterexamples in the context of simplicial categories. Now we might be tempted to just forget about the simplicial structure, take the zero level morphisms and hope that we already obtain some uh, counterexample of the corresponding one categorical statements. However, this is not quite the case because there is a little bit of a mismatch here. In particular for any simplicial set, x, x, the emptiness of x is equivalent to emptiness of the zero level of it. But contractibility of a simplicial set is absolutely not related to the to its zero level being a singleton. So any <clears throat> any time that we mention any singleton, singletonness or contractibility of, of home sets or mapping spaces, this mismatch just stops us here and we're not getting anywhere. However, in two of these statements, we can actually dispense with any contractibility requirements. In particular, there are these two propositions that allow to reformulate VPR and WVP respectively with statements that are apparently weaker, but that just mentioned when the, the hum sets or mapping spaces are required to be empty or non-empty. Just, but never, never mentioning any any singleton S or contractibility properties. Um, so for these two statements, we do actually obtain counterexamples to the one category of statements, and we are able to expand the diagram in <clears throat> into this one that's visible on this slide, in which the lower uh, horizontal implications are just composites of uh, of the two respective squares. Now it remains to 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 answer the question whether also the med vertical implication is invertible or equivalently the uh, the left bottom horizontal implication is. <clears throat> now the classical proof of the implication from VPR to VPO substantially relies on. Uh, uh, an, uh, a universal embedding result, which is also due to Adam and uh, which says that given any accessible category K, then this can be fully embedded into the category of, of graphs, which is simply set to the, to the category which has two parallel errors. Because, well, a graph is just a set of edges and a set of vertices with a source and target map between them. Now, uh, there is a result along similar lines in infinity categories, which says that given an accessible infinity category K, then there is a full embedding in, into this category, which is the category of infinity categorical graphs, where I just replaced the, the category sets with infinity categorical spaces as usual, as it often, very often happens when going, transferring 
uh, uh, statement from one category to infinity categories. However, there is this is only a partial generalization in which the one category result is actually more is actually finer and more powerful. In that, we also know that graphs in the image of these full embeddings can be chosen in such a way that <clears throat> the product map source target is a monomorphism. In other words, these graphs are, are up to isomorphism, just uh, binary relations on a set. Now, uh, one uh, particular consequence of this final result is that in the image of such embedding, there can only be a bounded amount of graphs which have a fixed set of vertices. And uh, this is, it's, it's upon this that, it, that is based the, one of the essential steps of the classical proof of VPR going to VPO. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, in the infinity categorical generalization, this finer property could not be proven so far, at least. Um, so this prevents us from fully adapting the argument uh, and give an infinity categorical proof uh, of the uh, of the respective infinity categorical statements uh, um, of the implication between them. However, this seems to be at least one significant step in that direction, although it's not yet finished. <clears throat> okay, I would like to share at least the the an outline of the proof of uh, this infinity categorical embedding results because there are at least, uh, at least a couple of properties, a couple of features in this proof that I personally found really interesting and kind of surprising as well. So first we want to reduce our accessible uh, infinity category K to a category of simply shut regimes. This can be done by Ethereum by Duggar. So we reduce to the case where K is equivalent to the coherent nerve of M where M is a simplicial model structure on a category of pre sheets of simplicial pre sheets. Now, here is the first interesting feat, the first of the two interesting features of the proof that I was talking about. There are actually two versions of Duggar's theorem. One, which happens in non simplicial uh, model categories, and the other happens in simplicial model categories. The Latter one is much simpler and also much powerful than the, than the former one. Now we are actually in a simplicial context, so we might easily just, just uh, use a more powerful version of Duggar's theorem. However, we do not want to do that. We actually want to use a non-simplicial version of the theorem. And the reason of that is because uh, we need to be able to choose C, this category C here to be uh, an ordinary category rather than a simplicially, simplicially enriched category. And the reason for that in turn is that we wanna be able to switch the category C and the category of simplices between them in order to, to, to construct functors on them level-wise, which is the next step of the proof. So we're now in the situation where we're working in uh, simplicial pre-sheets on C, where C is an ordinary category. Now working, Level-wise, we use the classical result and uh, define a fully faithful functor going to the category of S set to the two parallel errors. Um, and the problem so far is that this is not a, we would need a, simplicial, a simplicially enriched functor. Now, so far, we only have an ordinary functor. We would like to enrich it in this way. So this left-hand side of this isomorphism <clears throat> um, is the nth level of the map and simpli simplicial set of, of morphisms from F to G in this uh, simplicial per sheaf category. And by fully faithfulness, it is isomorphic to this thing here. However, this is not the, the nth level of the corresponding map and simplicial set in the codomain category. We solve this issue by defining a natural, 
uh, natural map theta as shown here in such a way that precomposition with theta defines an isomorphism here uh, from this map in simplicial set to this other map in simplicial set. Now, this right hand side is actually the end level of the of the map in simplicial. Uh, sorry, these these are just sets, and this is the end level of the of the map in simplicial set in the in the codomain category. So, in one shot, we produce simplicial enrichment of of delta, and we shown we 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 showed that uh, this. Uh, simplicially rich delta is now fully faithful in the simplicially enriched uh, sense of the word. <clears throat> and we conclude by observing that the codomain category here is a uh, model categorical uh, way of expressing the category of infinity categorical uh, graphs. So this last thing is the second feature that I personally found surprising in, in this proof. Namely, this is a very classical, very explicit and one categorical proof. There is nothing there is that is inherently or strictly or that even looks infinity categorical here. This is just a go to all the one categorical proof. Um, which is usually not the case when, when proving theorems in infinity categories. So this is the outline of the proof. Let's now move to some of the consequences that these uh, statements have for presentable categories or infinity categories. For example, assuming one of these statements <clears throat> can uh, very significantly simplify the detection of certain properties of subcategories of, of presentable ones. Uh, for example, let's, let's focus for the moment on this statement, <clears throat> saying that after assuming Bopenka's principle, then um, a full subcategory of, for a full subcategory of a presentable category, these four conditions are equivalent. A is closed under limits as formed in K. A is the localization of K at a class of morphisms, which means uh, this terminology here means <clears throat> that it is an orthogonality class. This is another, uh, another customary term for it, which is a, the full subcategory of all objects that have the, the strict, the unique right lifting property with respect to this given class of morphisms. A is the localization of K at a small set of morphisms. And finally, A is reflected in K. Moreover, all these, these four conditions imply presentability of A itself. Now, not all of this proposition relies on set theory and on the assumption that Rubenka's principle is true. The only parts in which we actually need the theory are uh, the implication from two to three, where we need Vopenka's principle, and the implication one to four, which is actually equivalent to weak Vopenka's principle. Now, can we generalize this to an, an infinity categorical statement? The answer is yes, in this case, with some amount of work, we can promote this proof to, to some story that um, takes place in combinatorial model categories. Therefore, after applying coherent nerves, we almost immediately obtain a corresponding infinity categorical proof, uh, uh, theorem, which uh, whose statement is basically the same, just happening in infinity categories. Similarly to the classical uh, one dimensional statement. The implication one of four is equivalent to infinity, uh, the, to, to weak infinity Bopinka's principle, which we already know to be the same as weak Bopinka's principle. And for the rest, uh, this is quite of an important remark, actually. We, I want to notice that we're only using the one dimen dimensional version of Bopinka's principle, not 
either of the infinity infinity dimensional ones. And this is another bit of data that seems to suggest that Vopenka's principle should be the same in one categories and infinity categories. And that's just assuming the, the apparently weaker version is ready enough to, to uh, deduce statements that also happen in, in the stronger context of infinity categories. Now, there is an almost dual statement to this, which is not quite as well behaved as the, the one that we just examined. So again, assuming Vopenka's principle, let A be uh, a, a full subcategory of presentable category K, and the following three sentences are equivalent. One, A is closed under co-limits, okay? Two, A is the co-localization of K to class of morphisms, which is simply the dual of a localization. And three, A is co-reflected in K. Moreover, again, these three statements imply presentability of A itself. Now, this proposition can, can, has only been um, generalized to some extent in the context of infinity categories, um, namely the co-implication two and three, so the equivalence of two and three, the above statement, statements and the conclusion about presentability of A also hold for infinity categories. The implication three to one is uh, trivial and it doesn't even assume a set theory. So the only remaining piece to generalize is one to three, but this is still, uh, uh, this remains an open question at the moment. Now I want to conclude my talk by giving a few, a few reflections about some, some, some op open questions that are still there including this, this last unresolved matter. So some of the open questions that are still there are the limit closure. Although we, we already, we've already seen that um, a limit closed category, full subcategory of a presentable one is reflective under weak Vopenka's principle. We don't even need weak Vopenka's principle if our full subcategory is the limit closure of a small full subcategory. This holds in one categories. We don't know whether it holds for infinity categories. Another thing is the, the last implication that was that remained open in the, in the previous slide. A co-limit closed full subcategory is co-reflective under Vopenka's principle in one categories. We don't know. We also don't know whether this is the case for infinity categories. So a natural question might be, why don't these two particular statements automatically transfer to infinity categories? My answer to this is their one-dimensional proofs rely on the specialized and functor theorem, which does not exist in the infinity world, or at least uh, as of now, it doesn't exist. Now, a second spontaneous question after hearing this could be, why is there no specialized impactor theorem in, in, in infinity world? Why is it so hard to get? And my answer to this is monomorphisms in infinity categories are much harder to detect than their one-dimensional counterpart. Namely, monomorphisms in a one category uh, can be characterized as being uh, left cancelable morphisms. Now, all monomorphisms in an infinity categories certainly always are left cancelable, but this is far from being a characterization of them. They're actually much harder than that to, to detect. So they're not as well behaved, not as easy to, to recognize. <clears throat> and the proof of the special agent finder theorem doesn't, doesn't seem to, to generalize infinite categories. There's another consequence of this fleetingness of monomorphisms in infinite categories that we've already seen in one of the previous slides, which is the lack of the, the, of the monic property in the universal embeddings into the category of infinity categorical graphs. <clears throat> now, if we could obtain some, somehow this monic property, then we almost immediately would have a generalization of the, of the proof of VPR to VPO. So we would obtain the, the implication VPR infinity 
and VPO infinity, which as we also have seen is equivalent to the, to the, to the equivalence between the Volpenka's principle and infinity Volpenka's principle. <clears throat> uh, another question that the moment remains open is that we don't know if, as it, if the case, as it is the case for wave Volpenka's principle and the rigid formulation of Volpenka's principle, there is any way to reformulate the ordinal formulation of Volpenka's principle as well that only talks about emptiness or non-emptiness of home sets, but doesn't need to specify whether these home sets are, are assumed to be, are required to be uh, uh, singletons or not. If there were to be such such a uh, reformulation, then likewise we would we would obtain a proof uh, almost immediately to to these two uh, equivalent open questions above. So this is it. This is the end of my talk, and thank you very much for your attention.